Greetings Geometry students. Today we're going to be expanding our discussion of Venn diagrams by looking at larger Venn diagrams. Please copy down the title as well as our objectives. Our objective for the day is to learn how to read data from larger Venn diagrams. The language objective, which you do not have to copy, is the student will uh, demonstrate the ability to decode larger Venn diagrams and describe the data contained within them. And your essential question for the day, can I read larger Venn diagrams and answer questions about them? Hopefully you got a good grasp of the information that we talked about yesterday on how to read Venn diagrams, particularly how to look for the unions and intersections of particular sets. And then also we introduce the not uh, particular sets uh, with the little tick mark, the apostrophe that was in there. So hopefully you got that because we're going to be looking at that more today. As always, anytime you need more time, press play, uh, press pause and then hit play when you're ready to move on. Okay, so let's take a look. Now many times, particular sets of data can actually fit into uh, more than two sets at the same time. Okay, for example, I could ask people, are you a sophomore? Are you a female? Uh, things like that, which would be two sets of data, or two sets that people could possibly fit into depending on their yes or no answers. But those aren't the only pieces of information that a person could be questioned on. Okay, uh, we could expand it even further, talking about how many, uh, if you have brothers and sisters, or if your parents are still married, or, you know, all kinds of things like that could be taken into consideration. So there might be more than two variables being observed at one time. So it is not uncommon to see Venn diagrams that have three sets. And actually, Venn diagrams can grow into even larger um, larger sets, uh, four sets, five sets, and so on. But those become extremely complicated to try to read. We won't be looking that deeply into it. Three uh, sets will be as large as we will be looking. Okay, so in the case that we do have three uh, sets of information being considered in a particular Venn diagram, obviously there's going to be three circles. And instead of just having one intersection, like we did when there were two sets, you can see there are many intersections, particularly there are four of them. We have three particular intersections where each of uh, two of the three sets intersect, meaning there's an intersection between set A and B. There's also an intersection between set B and C and an intersection between set C and A. And then there's also an intersection where all three sets run across each other. So this is going to complicate our interpretations of the subsets slightly, okay? but the idea for how to read the information is going to remain the same. However, I'm going to need you to slow down your thinking and pay close attention to what you're actually looking at when it comes down to trying to read the intersections and unions. Uh, if you get in a big hurry, a lot of times you're going to make some simple uh, oversights and mistakes, and it's going to cause you to miss uh, some problems that otherwise would be pretty easy. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through step by step kind of a pictorial example of where the intersections and unions would actually be showing up in a triple Venn diagram. Let's take a look. Okay, so consider the following triple Venn diagram. Okay, there it is. We have three sets, A, B, and C. Probably a good idea to press pause right now until you have the diagram copied down. Okay, so let's start taking a look at the information where it is uh, one step at a time. Now you're not going to be able to, on your paper, follow along with the graphical changes that I'm going to make, but please do pay attention and look at the area that I'm speaking about as we go through one step at a time. Okay, so let's look at the Venn diagram from a one-set perspective. Okay. 
set A in this particular diagram has 12 elements. Now obviously when you look into set A, we do not find a 12 anywhere in it. However, if you consider uh, all of the information that is contained in set A, as is highlighted right now, you have a, a one element, then two elements, then five elements, then four elements, and if you combine all of that information together, you find there are 12 elements. Set B, on the other hand, has 15 elements. And again, if you black out everything else except for set B, and we have two elements, three elements, four elements, and six elements. Set C will have 22 elements. Blocking out everything except for set C, we have a 5, a 4, a 6, and a 7. That is 22 total elements. Now, if you were paying attention to what just went on, with the counting of all those particular values, what you notice is that several of those values got counted several times, including the four in the center of the diagram being counted all three times. That's the hazard of having all of those intersections in there because we have uh, places where particular amounts of numbers actually belong to several sets at once. Okay, let's take this triple Venn diagram two sets at a time. And the first thing that we will look at is the union between set A and set B. There are 21 elements between the union of set A and set B, and that is what the union would look like. All of the information that is contained in A or B. Now please notice that the values that are in the intersection between these two did not get counted twice. They simply coexist in the same uh, set, or these two sets, at the same time. How about the intersection between sets A and B? Okay, well intersection means only the areas that exist in both set A and set B at the same time. That would be the two elements and the four elements so there are six. The union between set B and C, okay, again, union means or, so any values that exist either in set A or set B would be fair game for this one. So if we add up all of those values that are in there, we find that we have 27 of them. The intersection, on the other hand, to be in an intersection, it must be in both sets at the same time, which is only the four elements that are in the center and then the six elements that are specifically caught between set B and set C, so there are ten. The union between set C and set A, to be in the union, must only be, or it must be in either set at any particular point. So all of these values would be in the union. If we add all of those up, we would find that there are 25 of them. The intersection must be in both set A and set C at the same time. Five elements that are in A and C only, and four elements that are also in set B. Okay. And then finally, what would happen if we considered all three sets at the same time? Okay. The union of all three sets has 28 elements in it. And of course, the union means anywhere is all good, so anything that exists in set A or set B or set C would be in this response, and there are 28 particular values that are showing up in the union of all three. And the intersection would be only the area that exists where all three sets run across each other, and that would be the four that is in the triple overlap inside of the center. And as always, let's not forget any values that show up outside of the sets 
are particular uh, numbers of responses or people that were surveyed that did not fit into any of the sets that were available. So if we take away everything that is in the sets, whatever is left over is uh, 8 in this case. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. Here is a triple Venn diagram with some different values that are in it. Take a moment and jot that down. And I'm going to give you several prompts that I want you to uh, respond to at the conclusion of the video. Okay, so based upon the Venn diagram that you have there, I want you to identify how many elements are in set A, how many elements are in the intersection between set C and set not B, how many elements are in the intersection of set A and B and C, how many elements are in not set B, how many elements are in the union between set A and B, and how many elements are in the universe. At the conclusion of the video, take shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes to examine those six questions and respond to them correctly. Press pause if you need more time to copy this screen. And then finally, address your summary. Jot down any questions you may have about the lesson at hand, and keep in mind your essential question, can I read larger Venn diagrams and answer questions about them? Well, if you were able to respond to those six questions, I would think the answer would be yes. If you are unable to or you end up missing them, I think you need more practice on triple Venn diagrams. I appreciate you finding time to get your notes taken care of. This one ran a little bit shorter than others. As I said, sometimes they're longer, sometimes they're shorter. So appreciate you finding time to get your notes taken care of, and I'll see you in class.